Today is a huge day for us. I don't know what I've gotten myself into, but it is the start of a brand new series. So if you're trying to learn how to train your new dog, you have come to the right place. I'm Zach George, I'm a dog trainer. Meet my new project, Kona. I've got just three weeks to train her and set her up for the most well-behaved life possible. That means I need to work on the most common puppy issues like potty training, how to actually pay attention, stopping things like play biting, chewing, separation anxiety, getting along with other animals, leash walking, and teaching her everything a good dog needs to know. Real dog training doesn't always go smoothly, and that's why I'm going to show you every success and mistake and how I work through all of the most challenging parts of raising a new puppy. Welcome to your new puppy survival guide. Hello, oh my goodness. Look at her. This is Tristan's dog. Oh my God, she's beautiful. Oh, hi. Hey guys, I'm Tristan, Zach's video editor. My wife Kate and I recently got an Irish doodle puppy named Kona, and we have a baby on the way. So I wanna make sure the puppy gets the best start possible. Good luck, Zach. First thing I like to do is show a dog where to go potty, and she's been on the road for about 45 minutes probably, so I wanna give her a chance to go potty. Oh, isn't she adorable? Yes. Wow. There's so much to train a new puppy, but we've got to start somewhere. How about with potty training? Nice, potty training's going well so far. That's good. Yeah. All right, call as much as you want. Yeah. I'll not keep in touch. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. All right, see you soon. That's okay. Yeah, he just walked out the door right now. And look, I'm told one of her issues is separation anxiety. So that's something that we're going to be paying attention to as we get to know her. But right now, yeah, there it is right there. But right, right now our main focus is simply in, <laughs> in getting her comfortable with this new place. Hey, what's going on? I mean, the second her dad walks out the door, you can see that she's thrown off and oh, hello. I'm your new dad, not really, but I'm your caretaker for the next few weeks. It's going to be okay. I, I, looks like she accepted that pretty quick. <laughs> I think the fastest way to get her comfortable in this new place is to get her playing and get her really interested in me, let her check out things. We have a lot to do over the next 24 hours with her. So I think we should get started. When I'm working with a new puppy, I prefer to use a harness with them. So I want to get her used to wearing the harness, although we haven't really gotten off to a good start here, have we? Okay, no, you're supposed to wear this, not what have I gotten myself into? I need to get her comfortable with her harness. Let me see if I have some treats here from our bark box. She's gonna love this. What's the theme? Trick or treat. Check this out. Jack O'Lamb. <laughs> She's making herself right at home. What is this? Is that good or what? I'm trying to get her to poke her head through it like this. There we go. Look at that. What? That was so slick. So far, yes, good. It's partially on, let's give her a treat so we can keep her optimistic throughout the harness wearing process. And I think that'll fit perfectly, Brie. Oh, Look at that. Yay. There we go, good girl, all right. BarkBox and Super Chew are our monthly subscription boxes where they send you amazing treats and toys every month. I mean, you can see instantly, I haven't even had a chance to take the tag off. And she's into her candy corn. <laughs> She loves it. Let's see, what other kind of toy do we have? If I'm gonna get Kona super comfortable with me, there's no shame in showering her with gifts right away. These treats have already come in handy. She's been here less than five minutes and I've already been able to get her comfortable wearing a harness, playing with toys. And Bark also sends you a chew. But it looks like Kona might want some tougher things to chew on. I mean, don't underestimate puppies. That's what Super Chewer is for. This is a completely new level of toughness right here. Let go. Did we get lucky? Yes. <laughs> I think we did. What's that? All right, awesome. Look how she's instantly kind of chewing on it. For a teething puppy too, a super chewer box can be really valuable. That one's a lot tougher. This one has a little more give. Let's see if she likes it. Hey, what's this? Get it. I love how she just like tries every new toy. So we have plenty of supplies, plenty of treats right now. There should be nothing that we can't teach her. And all of you are gonna get a free Bark Box or a free Super Chewer box. Just go to BarkBox.com slash dog training or SuperChewer.com slash dog training. You better hope that Kona leaves a box for the rest of you. Now I've intentionally avoided meeting Kona. She's been with her new family for a few weeks right now, but I really just wanted this to be as authentic and real as possible. So I've just met her today. She's gonna to be living with us for the next few weeks and I'm going to do my best to get her as far as we can get her. 
to prepare her for an amazing life. So she's gonna have an amazing life either way. What a good girl, ah, yeah, okay. So right off the bat, I can see she needs to adjust her aim and know how to conduct herself, ouch, when she encounters human flesh. So she's definitely a biter, especially when she's in a playful mood like this. We're going to address biting for sure at some point over these next few weeks. I'm also told that she has issues with separation anxiety. She gets pretty anxious when left alone and she's not used to being in a crate. So she sleeps with her parents. And if she doesn't get to do that, then she tends to be very upset by that. So we're gonna work on getting her comfortable with being alone over these next few weeks as well. Look at that, that's a nice little tug. Oh man, go get it. Let's see how her fetch is doing. Does she know how to bring it back? I'll take it. I think it was an accident, but let's see if we can go ahead and get it. Good job. So, you know, I mean, my instinct immediately takes me to fetch with just about any dog because I guess my hypothesis is the faster I can get her playing with me, the more likely it is I can have a really good bond with her and get her wanting to listen to me. What a good girl you are. You are so perfect. Let's see, does she know let go or drop it? Let go, drop it. She doesn't appear to know what those mean yet. What I'm gonna do to teach her to drop this toy is I'm just gonna make it kind of boring. Just hold it still and watch my hands. Let go, get it. I'm gonna immediately give it back to her right as she drops it. Do you know where it is? Look at that, guys. Come on. Yeah, good girl. Do you see that? It looked like she really thought that one out. She used her brain to go look for that toy that she was into. Let's work on drop it again or let go, whatever you want to call it. Make it boring. Let go. Yes. Notice how I'm saying yes the moment she does anything I like. I'm using a 10 foot leash, by the way. We have a pretty big area down here, so it doesn't make sense to just let her off leash and go wherever she wants. Especially since she's in a new place, she's not fully potty trained yet. These are all things we have to work on. So if you're trying to learn how to train your new dog, you have come to the right place. I am noticing a lot of biting. Ouch, ouch, ouch! That's not working too well. But every time she bites me, I'm gonna really focus on redirecting her uh, onto something that is acceptable. You can, ah, 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 good, yes. Let go, yes. You know, the temptation here when you have a puppy is to try to teach everything at the same time, but you really have to pick your battles. So I'm not gonna focus too much on the biting right now as much as I am gonna focus on really redirecting her onto the toy and keeping the mood of the play session upbeat and positive, because that really is my goal. Yes, good, let go. Try not to get too caught up in specific orders of things to teach and really focus on what your dog is telling you and what needs attention and so on. As you train a dog, as you're going to see in this series, we don't just resolve biting in one day or jumping. We don't just teach fetch in one day. So it looks like she's looking outside. Let's go give her another potty break right here. For this next 24 hours, I'm gonna be really focused on showing her the right places to go potty. I'm told she still needs some improvement on potty training. The thing with potty training is take your dog out very, very often. Give them lots of opportunities. Right now we've got some people taking a walk up here on the levee. Let her check that out. So there's gonna be a lot of this. I mean, just letting a new puppy check out the world is very important. I didn't see her pee that time, but that's okay. I mean, you don't wanna think that your dog has to go pee or poop every single time you let him outside. Much better to let him out very often. So for her, I'm gonna be letting her out every 20 to 30 minutes, especially on this first day, just to get her super comfortable with going in the correct place, which in this case is outside. You're doing a great job so far. So maybe I'll give her a tour of the downstairs here. We've done a pretty good job puppy proofing, but obviously puppies are gonna like shoes, don't we all? I'll try and keep those out of the way and put those up later. Even though I'm very good about controlling the environment of a new dog, it's still important to puppy-proof your home. If you're an inexperienced person with dogs especially, you'll want to go out of your way to really puppy-proof the house and make sure that they can't destroy things that could potentially be harmful to them or just harmful to your property. So for example, we have a trash can. Ours tends to tuck away, which is nice, but if yours didn't do this, you would make sure that your dog didn't have free access to the garbage can. That can be something that really is tempting for a dog. Be mindful of things like electrical cords. I see I've got some tissues here. I should probably move those. Things like electrical cords can be very desirable to dogs. I don't think she'll have access to that because she's going to be on leash. And I mean, it's really helpful to 
view the house from your dog's perspective. They're down here, what can they get into? Uh, I see some cords over there that I might need to tuck away, for example. You guys might think I'm joking, but I'm totally serious. I mean, you cannot and should not underestimate the intelligence and curiosity of a new dog, or any dog for that matter. Never trust a puppy. Zach George. Let her check out the kitchen, see what it's like. No doubt she's smelling our other two dogs. You might have noticed both Indy and Inertia have been put up right now. We really want to give Kona time to check out the place on her own without being distracted by dogs. It's one of our offices over here. We do have some of these gates placed throughout the house to really limit where she can and can't go if we do decide to let her off leash or let her run around. So we have, we're gonna have a gate here. Then I'm gonna have a gate here to put on the stairs so she doesn't go upstairs. When you've got a new dog, controlling where your dog can and can't go is everything because they're smart, they're curious, they have no idea what can harm them and what can't. If you wanna protect your property and keep things from getting destroyed and minimize potty accidents and really just accelerate your progress, controlling the environment is key. And that's a huge part of training a dog that even the most inexperienced trainer can do great with. Some of you might recognize this setup from our Inertia series, the dog training experience. This is how I intend to keep her contained when I'm not tending to her, when she needs to take her naps overnight and so forth. I love this combination of having a crate and an exercise pen, especially since she's not really crate trained. She doesn't love being in a crate while alone. This will give Kona a lot more area to play with, so it's not quite as daunting to her. So that's actually my next order of business to see if I can get her comfortable going in and out of the crate. I don't know if she already has like a negative association with it or what. So that's what I'm curious to find out. Kona, hey girl. Good, I love how she came to me. I said, Kona, hey girl. And I think she detected I had a treat. With a young dog especially, I wanna go out of my way to pair desired behavior coming to me in this case with something that she really likes, a bark box treat. There we go, good job. I'm actually gonna take off her leash for a second here. What happens if I throw that in? Does she just go right in or is she like, okay, good sign. A little hesitant to go in. Remember, she's not crate trained at all, so try that. There we go. Yes. Very good. Let's try something else here. So getting her comfortable with the whole area. Not bad. Kona, come here. Notice I haven't even closed the door. Come on. I don't want her to feel like, ha ha, I trapped you. I'm now closing the door and locking you in there forever. Want her to know that it's okay to go in there. Good job. Kona, come. Yes. Good girl. You're doing great. Yes. Uh, it looks like she's starting to make the connection. Come. Yes. Really responsive to come right there. I know her dad's been working with her a little bit on that, so that's really good. So here, I'm gonna do this. Let her discover that it's closed for a minute. Kona. Okay, good, and I'm just gonna let her out. I just wanna be really delicate because it can be a fragile thing when you're introducing a crate. Obviously, I'm not gonna get her fully comfortable with going in and out of crate in, in the first day necessarily, but I want to give her as much of a good association with it as possible. Ideally, the thing to avoid is just putting them in there and closing the door and seeing how they do. I mean, almost all dogs are going to not take that very well. So anything you can get your dog doing voluntarily is much more likely to be successful. It is so worth it to go out of your way to create this positive association with the crate and getting them comfortable with their area. Now you don't just have to use treats either. And remember, any puppy-proofed area will do. If a crate isn't realistic for your situation, you might have like a laundry room or something that you've puppy-proofed or a spare bedroom or something like that. It's important to really go out of your way to keep them extra safe. So I'm gonna go ahead and Close up the crate here for a minute. Now that I've got some fun toys in there for her, I'm gonna let her just check that out while being in a controlled environment. 
She's doing really well here. I mean, she hasn't been here very long at all and she's adjusting quite well. But you can see she's like, wait a minute, am I locked up? You can see she's like a little thrown off right now. She's like, wait a minute, we were just partying, having fun, and now you're walking away, leaving me in this contained area. Before an episode of separation anxiety erupts, I'm gonna let her out. Oh boy, I really don't want her rushing out. So we'll have to work on teaching her how to stay when I open the crate another time. For this first 24 hours especially, I want to be sensitive to the fact that it's going to take her some time to adjust and be herself. And it can really take a few days for just about any dog to become used to a new environment. Sometimes they're extra hyper, sometimes they're extra tired. I mean, different dogs react differently. Kona loves playing with other dogs. I also happen to have a young dog that loves to play with other dogs. So I was thinking it might be a great idea. Don't chew the carpet to have those two play together, maybe get some energy out. That might also help her adjust. I see that we're gonna have to deal with a chewing issue. So chewing and biting go a little hand in hand, though they are separate issues. So you can see, I mean, look at those, look at these teeth. Can you see them? Look at those puppy teeth. Oh, they're sharp, sharp. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you call that a bark? What is that? I was actually gonna wait until tomorrow to do this, but I'm feeling pretty good. I think we can do it now. This should be interesting. I think I'll have them play outside and meet outside at first just to investigate each other and have a good time. This is gonna be exciting. I'm pretty excited about this. Hey, good girl. Do you wanna meet a puppy? There's a puppy out here. Look, what's, look. See the puppy? <laughs> Good girl. Yes. You can see Kona is like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. Let them smell each other. Inertia is looking excited, but little pilo erection on Inertia's part. She's like, whoa, I wasn't expecting to see a dog right when I came out of there, but so far so good. And I love Kona's body language here. She's like, and it's normal to be a little nervous there. Nice shake off. Yep. Is that a puppy? It's okay. It's a, it's a stay. Good. It's okay. Give her space. I don't want her to get backed into a corner there. There we go. There's, you can see Kona's thinking about playing. And it's normal for a young dog to be a little standoffish when they meet a new dog. Inertia has pretty good social skills. So I remember Inertia was just like this when she was about this age. So really normal stuff. So Inertia is coming on a little strong there, but I think they're going to adjust okay. And this is normal. This is why socialization is so important with other dogs to get them comfortable with one another. You can see that Kona looks really interested in inertia, but she's also guarded and like, I don't know, that's a big dog. You can see she's looking at her. She's like trying to go up to her. A little hesitant. There we go. That's good. Look at that. So this, this is a good example here. She's starting to get adjusted. She didn't get up and run away like she did before. She's like, you can smell me. Good girl, Inertia. And that's really normal puppy behavior on Kona's part, lying on her back like that. It looks like she's slowly opening up, Kona that is. You can see Kona's initiating some play behavior, not only lying on her back, but trying to play grab her with her mouth. Notice that Inertia's pilo erection on her shoulders has gone down as well. She's less thrown off. Let's bring them inside and see how they do. I've got inertia in the crate here because again, inertia keeps coming on strong. I'm gonna let her out in a second, but I'm looking at Kona's body language and she's like thinking about playing. So I'm hoping that they'll open up to each other. This is why introducing your dog to other dogs is really important so that they can gain social skills with other dogs and behave appropriately. Good girl, lie down. Inertia, can you lie down? Kona, come here. Kona, come. And that's okay, remember, she needs time to adjust here, so. Where's the toy? Good, get it, good girl. Letting Kona watch over there seems pretty healthy. Let go, come around. Maybe I'll get some of this energy out of Inertia. Inertia did have a lot of exercise this morning as well. It looks like she's caught her second wind. And it looks like the strategy of having Inertia focus on a toy instead of solely on the puppy is putting her a little bit more at ease. Good, see how she's trying to catch a sniff, lie down. Okay, go get it. It's really important in these early stages to give your puppy a place to feel comfortable. Make sure that you have another dog under control if you're introducing them to one of your existing dogs like this, let go, so that they don't get 
overwhelmed. Lie down. Lie down is really good. It puts them lower to the ground, a little less daunting to a new puppy. You can see she's starting to pant pretty good, inertia, so that might mean that she's going to come on a little less strong. And don't be in a hurry to introduce a new dog to your pets either. I mean, you might notice we're introducing these two, but our cat is somewhere in this house. Maybe we'll introduce her later. Just notice how Kona is really kind of infatuated over here, really watching every move that inertia makes. This is also another reason that when you do training with a new dog, you'll wanna have your other dog up. So you'll notice that we'll be doing a lot of that. Inertia won't always be present when I'm doing training with Kona, because obviously that's a major distraction right there. And you wanna teach your dog how to listen to you without major distractions initially. And so this skittishness, again, completely normal. I like how she's coming to me over here. Makes her feel safe, it looks like. I'll compliment Inertia's social skills here. Like, she's not really coming on so strong to uh, Kona anymore. She seems to be sensitive to that, but she definitely wants to run and be energetic. Inertia is trying so hard to get Kona to chase her and play with her right now. And Kona wants to. I think she's gonna open up. We're just gonna give her time to do so. But just because a dog acts like this doesn't mean, oh no, they don't like other dogs or they're scared of other dogs. You do wanna go out of your way to set up ideal interactions right there. I love how Inertia really saw that Kona was retreating and respected that and was like, okay. And Kona, I can tell she's getting close to her first nap of the day, which is gonna be really helpful. So I'll show you what I do when she passes out, if she does out here. Imagine from Kona's perspective, there's so much to take in. She's just been dropped off here with these new people and this new dog and this really weird guy who's gonna try to teach her things. But remember, I mean, dogs are learning at every minute. And just as she observes Inertia running around with this toy here, she's definitely processing that. It's clear by her focus over here, she's very interested. She's starting to get a little brave. Maybe they'll bond over the toy, as a matter of fact. Let's see. If you did have a dog that was protective of toys, you would want to be careful about doing what we're doing here. Inertia hasn't shown any signs of resource guarding toys around other dogs. Check out how Kona sniffs Inertia's face here. I think that might mean she's becoming more comfortable. That's good. She got a nice face sniff in there. Okay, there's our play bow. Did you catch that? Yeah. That's our first play bow from Kona that I've seen. It's so fun to watch these guys open up before each other and start to get more comfortable with one another. I'm really proud of Inertia too. She's doing a reasonably good job at dialing it back when she detects that Kona is like, yeah, it's a little too much. You know, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if they were just gonna burst into a play session or if they were gonna be thrown off, but this is all pretty normal. And I think this is really good right now. And remember, today is just all about getting Kona acclimated and comfortable in this new place. And you can just read her like a book too. She's so funny right now. She's just like, what on earth is happening? And hey, this is great. Look how Kona is going into the area here voluntarily. It's a little deformed right now because we want the dogs to be able to play out here. So we move this back a little bit. But notice the door is still open over here. So Kona is free to explore it. And actually, it's almost like she prefers to engage inertia through the barrier. Okay, looks like we just had our first accident. She came in the crate and just peed. Oh my goodness. A 12 week old puppy like Kona is going to sleep a lot throughout the day. So I would like to get her comfortable sleeping in there. I'm thinking if I give her a really good chew that I might be able to encourage her to just calm down and take her afternoon nap in her area. I'm gonna give her a half a chew and we're gonna feed her. Let's see if she's comfortable in there. So we'll see if she can get her to just relax in there and engage that for a little while. Because I don't want her to feel too confined, that's why I have this extra big area. I found that it makes the crate introduction process a lot better if you have like a crate plus. Oh, hey, what's going I'm on? I'm gonna show you something that I wanna get your reaction to. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. These are Kona's parents. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, so they actually, an Irish setter and a poodle, like a 50-50 combo. Yeah. Nice. That's so cute. I oh. love that picture. Yeah, that is cute. I love it. I'm gonna also give her her food here. Let her get comfortable in there. Oh boy, she's ready to eat. Look at her. 
This is another really wonderful way to get your dog comfortable with being in their area, whether it be a crate or a place like this. Feed them in that area, give them fun things to do, give them toys that are unlikely to be destroyed while they're in there. So super chewer toys are a great example. Maybe avoid things like plush toys, which you know, they might rip apart if you're not supervising them. It all depends on the dog though. My hope is since she's doing so well, she's shown no signs of anxiety so far while being in here. I'm gonna give her a cool toy to engage with. Let her finish up her, uh, her breakfast there. Maybe encourage her to go on her bed. The experiment that we're currently doing here is we're going to see if she just checks out and dozes off here in a little bit. Part of my goal over these next few weeks is to get Kona more comfortable with being alone. And this is gonna start by getting her to be alone in a place that she feels is her own. So she's looking a little anxious here. My hope was that she was going to eat and then be like, all right, I'll take a nap. But that doesn't look like what we're getting here. <coughs> oh, there it is, okay. All right, so let me put inertia up so I can deal with Kona. So I see she's relatively calm, but she's showing potential of having another eruption of anxiety. I think I'm going to let her out right now. Come. <coughs> yeah! Look at that, good girl. I'm gonna give her a break outside. Oh, look. So that's really good. That's what we wanna see. Quiet, Inertia. Good girl. I love how she went pee the moment we came out. That's a really good sign that she's starting to equate outside with being the appropriate place to go potty. Oh, look. Oh my gosh, is this the best day ever or what? I mean, we're getting a number one and a number two. Inertia is kind of chilling over there, taking a break in her crate. And I noticed that Kona is starting to doze off a little bit. So I'm wondering if I should pick her up and go and put her in the crate while she's in this relaxed state so that she can have some experience of being alone in that crate. Let's see how it goes. You know, there's a lot of trial and error when you're training a new dog sometimes. Bet she went in, that's nice. Give her another bit of her chew. I'm just gonna walk away, be over here, still be within sight, but just kind of play it cool. So that was good. She kind of looked at me like, what's going on? And then took interest in her bark box chew over there. So this way I'm not just putting her in there, walking out of the door or going to bed. You know, I'm like really giving her some time to see that I'm here. She'll see me over here. She can enjoy her chew. She's in her big oversized area there. She's had lots of play time at this point, some training, lots of stimulation. And with her being a 12 week old pup, I know she is due for a nap right around now. So if I can just get her sleeping in there, even if I'm right out of here, I think that's gonna make major progress towards getting her comfortable being alone. So that when she is alone for a few hours at a time, she's likely to be more content. Easier said than done. I mean, we'll see how it goes. Every dog is different and separation anxiety, especially with that of a puppy can take a lot of strategizing and troubleshooting. In general, I should probably have her harness off there, but since I'm supervising her, I think I'm okay with it right now. So now she's done with the chew. She's out of food in there. This is where I'm curious to see if she'll just relax. See, there's a look of concern. I'm just trying to be nonchalant over here. It's always fun to experiment with dog behavior to see how each dog responds. This is where it can get a little bit messy when you're trying to train a dog. Cause on one hand, you know, you don't want to just put them in there and tell them to just deal with it. But on the other hand, she's really kind of borderline right now where I think that she could potentially lie down and relax and take a nap. So I'm just going to give it a second. It is interesting, as I got closer, the vocalization subsided. I wonder if I hang out maybe over here on this couch, if she's likely to feel a little more content as though there's a person closer by. So we'll see, so far so good. It's best to do things like this when you are in a position to monitor them to be present rather than just crossing your fingers and leaving and doing it all in one fell swoop. She's chewing on a beef tendon chew right now and that seems to be preoccupying her. This has the benefit of number one, giving her something she likes while also secondly, being in this confined area that she ultimately will need to be comfortable in. So the hope here is that she chews on this for a little while, she kind of remembers that she's tired and she takes a nap. Wouldn't that be great? 
This is good. I mean, this is already a victory right here. Maybe if I can increase the distance now and go back over there and see if she continues to remain content. That might be an interesting test. She doesn't seem to be too concerned about me. Relax. Quiet. So during moments of quiet, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a treat, see how that works. Good girl, quiet, yes. So if I can get her to be quiet and calm, I'll probably let her out again, just because maybe I'm throwing too much at her. So I'm really just trying to feel this out. We're all learning together. I think that's what makes this particular series interesting. Not everything works for all dogs. Quiet. You're doing great. I do want to avoid letting her out while she's barking, while she's in that anxious state. Good girl. See that nice settle? See, I'm torn though. Like, I think I'm gonna let her out. Cause on one hand I could be like, all right, she's showing signs of settling down. Maybe I should leave her in there. On the other hand, if I go and I sit down and she starts barking again, well now she's risen to that undesired state. So we'll go back to letting her just relax while on the lead here. So she was starting to doze off here and relax. She's definitely looking more well adjusted right now, keeping her near me. She's doing really well. You can see how she just looked at inertia over there and she's really chilling out, starting to adjust a little bit. She looks comfortable. We're not hearing any whining. We're not seeing any frantic behavior. So we've been just letting Kona chill, interact with inertia. Their behavior together is doing really well outside of the crate. I've just put her back in. I wanna see how she does. She slept for a total of like less than 20 minutes and we've had her six and a half hours so far. She was down here chilling with Bree while she was working while I got some stuff done upstairs, but she didn't really fall asleep. So I would have expected her to be more tired by now especially being 12 weeks old. I see what the issue is here. Like she's actually reasonably well behaved. I think she's gonna go back into a sit or down. Yep. Inertia, I want you in your crate. You are interfering, let's go. So I'm gonna put Inertia up in her crate. Go on, I'll let you out of it. Can you settle? That's very good. So I still have to do a lot of training with Inertia. She's not used to this dynamic of me working with another puppy while she's here. But notice Kona's behavior right now. She's really good. Like this would be great if she was like this all the time, but I'm gonna like walk to the front door and see if she becomes increasingly alarmed. I just wanna test here to see if this is indeed what's going on. Like, do I have to be in sight or is it even if I'm in sight, I still need to be close? Right there, that's pretty good. I think I'm actually just going to, you know, give her a treat. It can't hurt anything. I'm not really training her how to do anything. Rather, I'm just trying to chip away here. It can't hurt to give her a little bit of a treat when she is behaving calmly. I'm not saying that that in and of itself is going to train her to be good, but you know, it's just one little thing that might make the process a little bit nicer. So I'm going to ignore her. I'm going to wait for calmness. I mean, I'm right here, so it's not even like I've left her alone. There we go. Yes. You see how she... She went back to her chew toy. That would be great if she would chew on her chew toy. She may be feeling too anxious now. Just ignoring that. Nice job, relax. Let's call it relax. So, you know, if I do this a few hundred times, if I really go over there and give her some reinforcement for naturally relaxing, then I'm hopeful that she'll begin to initiate relaxing on her own more often. I mean, we're already seeing that at an increasing rate. Relax, yes. Every time I say yes, or close to every time that I say yes. I'm gonna make sure that I give her something, something good. You know, maybe it's a play, maybe it's a treat, something higher value than just good girl. Praise in and of itself isn't the best reinforcer for the majority of dogs, in my experience. Relax. And you can see the telltale signs of anxiety there, The dramatic yawn, 
the whining, all of that. The idea here isn't that she doesn't experience any anxiety. That's imminent with virtually all puppies. The idea is that we have her experience as little as reasonably possible. Relax. Yes. Relax. Yes. I'm really upping the rate at which I reward or give her a treat here to encourage some stability in the relaxed position. Relax. So it looks like prioritizing teaching Kona how to settle is going to be extra important for her. I'm trying to really get a jump on things for tonight because I'm gonna sleep down here with Kona. Maybe I can teach her this concept of relax before it's time to go to bed. Not likely, but never too soon to start, right? See, those vocalizations indicate she's still anxious. Listening for that particular vocalization that's like, okay, I'll do it. You can see we have significant anxiety. I'm like 15 feet away from her and she's like, I've got to be closer to you and I'm in sight and everything. So good girl, relax, good. So I'm going to let her do her thing and I'm just going to ignore her. And if I catch her relaxing, I'll continue to reinforce, relax, the good behavior that I like here. I see her thinking about dozing off. I mean, I gotta say, I was doubting my abilities for a second. I'm gonna put her to sleep. Look at this. Aww. Relax. Good girl. At first I was just using the treat just to try and let her know the sky wasn't falling, but the treats kind of really kept her more engaged rather than encouraging her to chill. So, I mean, that's the line you have to walk because sometimes you want to give them something that makes them feel better. Maybe that'll cause them to behave better. And then other times simply ignoring the behavior is what works. Those are the nuances that go into training a dog. Okay, so she did really well. She was in there for about 20 minutes or so. And now I'm letting her back out to let her know she's not banished in her secured area forever. But you might hear behind me, our yard guys have just showed up and that can always be interesting if a dog isn't familiar with lawn mowers and the way our house is positioned, the lawn mowers and leaf blower are gonna come very close to her. So she will see them and they're loud. This is a great socializing opportunity. I'm gonna try to do some conditioning here. I'm gonna grab some treats just to get her associating the lawn equipment with good stuff. All right, so here comes the lawnmower. Look at that. And this is pretty ideal because she's comfortable inside. <laughs> she's definitely noticing it here. Here you go, what's this, do you want this? This is just out of an abundance of caution. Once a dog becomes nervous of something, it takes a little bit more effort to get them to not be nervous of that thing. So if I can just immediately pair good treats with a loud motorized vehicle, then the hope is that she'll act just like this. Good girl. There we go. So I think she did a really good job there. She reacted well within the range of normal. You're gonna see that we're gonna have a strong emphasis over these next few weeks on introducing her to new things and really heavily socializing her to the world around her. Don't underestimate the significance of just letting your dog experience the world, especially when something abnormal like that happens. Kona is used to sleeping with her parents from home and it's easy to see why. But I really think that in order to get the separation anxiety under control, we've got to get her comfortable with spending time alone. And what better opportunity to get her to spend around eight hours by herself than when she's sleeping? It's a really good way to introduce this concept of being alone when they're most likely to relax. If you are getting a puppy and you do want them to be as independent as possible, I think it's really a good idea to get them spending those first few nights alone uh, actually, their first few months of sleeping alone. With inertia, I didn't even have her start sleeping in our bed till she was many months old because I wanted her to be comfortable with being alone for hours at a time sometimes. And so far, it's proven to be pretty effective. I mean, we did struggle with a little bit of separation anxiety, but we've pretty much overcome that. Nonetheless, the whole point is that I'm going to be sleeping down here so that I can easily tend to her and let her outside in the middle of the night 
uh, just to make sure that everything goes as smoothly as possible. Hopefully you don't hear that much from me overnight, but I'm going to document everything that occurs and show you how I handle it. And maybe it'll be helpful to you, we'll see. Now that the grass is freshly cut, let's go give her another socialization experience. Plus it's time for a potty break anyway. Remember, dogs smell in a way that we can't even fathom. I mean, they see the world through smell in a way that is so different than people. It is a major sense of theirs. So imagine all the smells that have been kicked up by the lawnmower out there. If we can smell it, you know they smell at times a thousand. Fresh cut grass, smells great. Good girl. That's the second or third time today where I've let her out and she's peed within seconds of letting her out. Go pee. Yes. Yes. Here you go. Good. You want this? Good girl. And you know, with a young dog, getting them comfortable walking on grass like this is also beneficial. You'd be surprised how many city dogs I see that are uncomfortable with walking on grass. So getting them walking on different surfaces even is a great thing to do with a brand new dog. We brought Inertia out. It's getting close to bedtime for Kona. So I want her to just have a really good play session out here or just a free play session, which basically means just letting her do what she wants to do. Maybe that means playing. Maybe that means just doing nothing, but just really good time for her to explore her world. Oh, looks like we're getting a little bit of rain too. So Kona is slowly warming up to Inertia, which is really good. I know we talked about this earlier, but I want to stress that it's not always a good idea to introduce a a new pet this quickly, but you know, inertia is really good with dogs. So now that she's freshly exercised, I'm gonna go ahead and give her some treats to go in there for a little bit. Uh, I think she's more likely to relax a little bit while in here. So I'm gonna put her back in here just for a few minutes just to get her slowly acclimated to her crate and containment area. I'm also going to feed her because it's time for dinner. So she's been in there for a little while eating her dinner. So far reacting really well. I like that inertia is chilling out as well. I'm just going to ignore her. Still nearby, she definitely freaks out more when I leave the room. But if I stay here, she's probably a little more likely to behave more comfortably and ideally. So this is how we're slowly easing her up to being alone and unattended. We do have a light bed we're gonna put in there, but since she peed on it before, we're washing it right now. This is really good so far. I think we're already starting to make progress on this. Relax. Good girl. And we'll ignore her and I'll bet she'll doze off. So far, so good. Kona is just checking out right now, doing a real good job. She's not sleeping, but she's behaving very acceptably. That's true, she's been quiet. I didn't even realize. Yeah, yeah, good she's job. acting like a regular dog. I'm gonna yeah. let her out another time or two before we go to bed officially and I'll take her harness off and everything. It's the first night with Kona. And I am so glad that we did that training earlier in the day. I'm also glad that we exercised her. Um, because look at her. Look how good she's doing. She's just chilling right now. But I'm still gonna hang out down here with her. I still have to put her bed in the crate and I've gotta take her out uh, probably one more time. But we're winding down for the night. Inertia is just so captivated by her. But um, yeah, should be an interesting night. We'll see how it goes. Taking Kona out now. Gonna go on her last potty break. I've got Inertia in our potty area over here. So I'm pretty optimistic that we're gonna have a, a good night tonight. I think she's gonna do really well. Let me see if I can get her being playful. Come on. No, <laughs> you were so playful earlier. Now you just don't wanna move, huh? Oh, there it is, sweet girl. I know you miss your parents. No, that is tempting to let you sleep and cuddle tonight, but we're on a mission to teach you how to be alone, Kona. All right. Come on, come on, let's go. Good. Okay, are you serious? Is that really happening? I just took her out. And it looks like we have a proper accident. It happens, it happens. I'll be looking for it to become a pattern. I mean, this is part of potty training. They don't always know where to go and where not to go. We'll let her replace the water she just expended. And I'm gonna go clean that mess up. I've got Kona in the other room right now, and I thought, you know, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and put down a couple of pads here. All right, so I'm gonna go get Kona now. Oh, okay. Can we relax? Good girl, I'm gonna try and let her out during moments of quiet. Good girl, okay, come on, let's go. All right, so we've got her up for the night. 
And so far so good on the bats. She doesn't appear to be digging at them or anything. See, if she sees me put them down, I felt like she'd be more likely to want to play with them and view them as a toy. Now they're just boring and stuck on the ground. Oh, I forgot to put her bed in there, that's right. Okay, now she's all ready for bed. I've taken her harness off. I've got her bed ready, her pads are ready. And inertia is trying to say goodnight too, I guess. But keep in mind, this is a brand new place to her. So we want to be really understanding of that. She's really starting to get the hang of it though. Look how much better that is than earlier. Even though she's a little anxious, it's slowly getting better. Hopefully we'll stay on this current rate of progress. So I went to go get ready for bed. I noticed that Kona had a bit of an outburst. And now that I've returned, she's doing better. But when I came back in the room, I was just like, I'm not even paying attention to you. I'm just not even gonna look at you. And after doing that for about 60 seconds, she did that. And you can see the anxiety while present seems to be subsiding a little bit. <laughs> she's a really good girl. It's 8.15 and she's still a little antsy, as you can see. The puppy pads are still intact. That's a good sign. So she's whining a little bit. There we go. Relax. Nice job, girl. I know it's hard for her. Good night, Kona. We're off to a good start. It looks like she's falling asleep now. She's being calm. Like, honestly, I think there's a good chance she would be just fine if I wasn't down here at this point, but I'm not sure of that. So I need to get to know her a little bit better. Okay, she's been sleeping solidly for an hour and I am dozing off. So I just wanted to check in one more time and show you how she's doing. She looks good to me. She just whined a little bit and she's up and walking around now. I'm gonna see if she settles back down and she does. I think she may have just woken up and been like, where am I? Now she seems recalibrated. So she's going like 20 minutes resting and then a minute or two whining. So, I may let her out if she continues to do this pattern. I'm gonna see how it goes. I've decided I am gonna take her out one more time. Her rate of crying and whining is increasing a little bit. I'm really trying to only let her out when she's behaving acceptably, even if it's just for a short period of time. Oh, look at that. She's going pee, how about that? She did have to go after all. Nice long one. Good girl. Do you have to go poop or are you ready to go inside? Okay, let's see how she does now. Exploring her crate a little bit. Oh, interesting, little sneaky dog. There's a bowl up there, there's no food in it. I might go ahead and give her a little extra food. I only say that because she was really cool about chilling and now she seems a little more animated. I just gave her some food. And boy, she does scarf it down. Maybe she's not feeling anxious at all. Maybe she's just a little extra hungry. So interesting getting to know each dog. I'm way too interested in this. Looks like she's settled down again. So at this point, if she cries again, I'm probably just gonna let her cry because I've let her out multiple times. I've given her food, I've given her water. And you know what? Worst case, if she has an accident, it's easy to clean up. So I reserve the right to change my mind, but that's what I'm thinking as of right now. So it looks like she did go potty over here. So I'm gonna clean that up right now because that stinks. She's having a little bit of a tough time tonight so far, but that's okay. Thought I'd give her a little bit of a love infection, you know. She's uh, no doubt missing her mom and dad. She's being super sweet. Ready to go back to bed? Okay, she is sleeping now, going back to sleep. I think that actually helped to uh, give her a little bit of love. Let her know everything's gonna be okay. Good girl, Kona, relax. Good morning. Really? How'd it go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was kind of rough. She woke up all the time. Yeah, I heard you. Hello. 
Hello. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at you. Uh, ow. Ow. <laughs> ow. Just gonna pee on you too. All right, we made it. That was our first 24 hours. Well, I'm excited for day two. I guess we better get going. Get a free BarkBox Super Chewer or both when you sign up for a multi-month plan. Just go to BarkBox.com slash dog training and or SuperChewer.com slash dog training. Subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok to see every single one of my dog training tips. See you guys next time.